I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. 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 Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. Hey! Man, fuck that, come on. How are you, nigga? Just pull through here. I'm good. Nigga just shot me in my hand, grazed my back. Man, I'm good. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. We gotta talk. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Man 2 Movement. And this is, in hindsight, very sad day. Um. Mo three just fake getting shot. Ain't no, ain't no other way to even. Ain't no other way to put it. Ain't no other way to say it. This nigga just pulled a fucking six nine, like, and that's really what the fuck it was. Um, if you can't see that this rap shit takes something more from an artist, something deeper than just you know money and time like this shit actually takes who the fuck you are and manipulates it to where you're going to be broken in some way once you leave this game in some way they have it to where now you don't just come in this rap shit succeed make your money and make a fan base and then leave the fuck out no you come in and you do not leave if you leave you're so fucking embarrassed, your fucking reputation is so fucking destroyed and destroyed that you will never sell another anything uh, until the day you fucking die. Um, Mo3, and before we even get started into this shit, I want to give a real sincere uh, apology to 704 Soldier Chris. Um, I posted this shit from uh, Vlad, from Vlad TV, they always seem to be pretty credible. I posted this story from Vlad TV earlier this, uh, early this afternoon, uh, early, yeah, early this afternoon, and, uh, my followers, as soon as I posted this shit, they said, no, nah, it's fake, it's fake. Take it down, take it down. So, I mean, I, I got the shit the same way. Actually, I didn't. I got the shit from Vlad TV. No one sent me that. Or so, maybe somebody did. I don't fucking know. Um, I don't really have to go look for stores no more because people just send them shit to me. But I posted it. My people said it's fake, it's fake. Take it down. So I took the shit down. Um, Chris hit me up. He like, man. I can't believe this nigga Mo3, he like he want he probably one of the real ones. This nigga goddamn pulling uh faggot tricks. And um I'm like, what happened? Like what what's what like what what's the word? Like no, nah, that nigga faked the whole shit. I'm like, what the fuck? But I had to, you know, had a uh, class to do. Um promotional class. You get into those once you go to tax cooperations. Um, on YouTube, it's the new um, channel. Uh, it's Conseco's Rap Schools, where I actually do short videos on what you need to do as an artist, as anyone in entertainment, building an internet uh, following, and also as an artist, what the fuck you should never do. Um, but but once I finish with the class, um. Chris had tagged me in the actual video of Mo3 after he got shot in the head and the back. I look at the shit and I'm listening to how this nigga talk. I'm looking at the clothes. I'm listening at the background. 
Like my nigga, this ain't no fucking joke. This is real shit. This is real. Like how the fuck can't you tell that this shit is real? This is real shit. It's obvious that this shit is real. That's how a nigga talk when he's been lost blood and and um you go through you have a contusion, especially with the head. This shit is real as fuck. Only to fucking find out that it was actually fucking fake. And at that time, it's like, are you fucking serious, Mo? Like, that's, nigga, I don't, nigga, obviously, you did it because, ah, uh, niggas get more promotion when they dead, ah, uh, that, that's how you get shine, my nigga, there's a whole lot of shit you can do to get shine that a real nigga's not supposed to do. You really, you posed to really be one of them niggas. And do y'all see why the fuck I I, I, I don't I, I seem empathetic when it comes to rap niggas? Uh, no, I'm not. Come on, my nigga. For a couple more eyes, I mean, I understand that this shit is all about eyes, but my nigga, if you can't get it off of hard work and talent, you shouldn't want it. If you gotta pull your goddamn pants down, you shouldn't want it. If you gotta get on your knees, you shouldn't want it. But this is what the rap trap is. You get in this game and it's worse once you enter the rap trap. When you're an independent artist on the outskirts trying to get in, you know, you're, you're so close to the street that you're like, nah, my nigga, I'm going to keep it real, my nigga, and all that shit like that. But then once you step into the game a little bit, you start getting motherfuckers, you know, the, 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 the actual CIA agents around you. And they telling you this would be a good look. This would be a good. This would be a very good marketing plan. Hey, I bet if we did this, we can get our um, our views up by at least fifteen percent. Like that's the way they're talking to you, and then they're also talking to you like, hey, um, sales are down uh, fifty percent. Is it something that happened in the street that we're not aware of? Hey, we're looking at your um, your impressions. That bullshit. Looking at your impressions, and they went down twenty five percent. Is there something that we can do? And you keep on hearing this. You keep on hearing this. You're in a you're in beef with this nigga. Um, you know these motherfuckers looking at you. You got haters on your back at all fucking times. To to the point where you can't even hear the positive people. The people telling you that you changed their lives. The people saying that I couldn't live without your music and all that. Fuck all that shit. I'm listening at the haters and these motherfuckers talking about my numbers is down. That's who the fuck I want to goddamn work for. And we do that a lot in life. We work, we do more for our haters and the naysayers in our life than we do for the people that actually love us. It's just a condition of us. And it's usually, it's not even just a black thing. That's a human thing. Like, we want the people who don't like us to like us. We don't see the bitch who's down for us and waiting up all night for us to get home and you know, actually putting in the work and, and being in all that shit. Like, we want the bitch who, you know what I'm saying, ain't, ain't texting back every time we text them and shit like that. Don't answer the phone every time the one we got to actually, you know what I'm saying, work for. Us. That's just what's, what's going on with us. And because that's a human trait, you don't want to, you don't, you, you don't, you don't truly fault a nigga for maybe giving more attention to his haters and speaking to his haters more than he speaks to the people who fuck with him. Um, but when you do this shit, my nigga, are you serious? And this is this is along the same lines of what Key Glock and uh, Young Dog did. They did the same fucking things. Um, Key Glock do a video of him busting out Young Dog uh, windows and all that shit like that, and then you find out it's for a fucking uh, music video. My 
my nigga, that's fine for a rap nigga to do. You didn't come in the rap nigga door. Joyner Lucas, uh, Tory Lanez, Drake. Drake can do a dance contest in the middle of his fucking video with Chris Brown. When they when they they in they beef on care. They can do that. That's their lane. But black youngster, well, black youngster had a very kind of unique. It was not a, it's not unique because we've had uh old dirty bastard, we have, we've had um Buster Rhymes, the animated rap nigga, whatever like that, where it, you're teetering on the line of fucking cooning and being, you know, all that shit. Um, but now it's the gangsters doing it, so you can't really say shit about it. But that's what the fuck it is. Uh, uh, no, nigga, uh, we shooting a video, and you don't clarify, so you just let people's mind wonder, and then. I thought I'm beyond. I thought like Dolph to me was a real trap street nigga, and honestly to me that that show whatever that whatever that video was he did when they when they reenacted that old movie where um, the, there was an old timey black movie where the, the bitch come out and she beat up the dude like I'm gonna beat your ass. That's what he kind of like started switching over to me. Um, going to the other side of being more entertaining than being a street nigga. Um, and maybe he learned like you can't win as a street nigga. You win being fun loving. All good. And if that's where you want to go, then stay over there. And that, that's that's a real fucking decision you have to make. Uh, ludicrous, pit bull. Uh, anybody who goes to that side, well, I'm just going to be like a... A uh, flow rider, you gotta, you don't, you can't come back over here, and maybe you don't want to come back over here because the money might be a lot smaller. Um, but that is a parallel of this shit to me. But what Mo just did was a lot higher on that meter because, nigga, you faking shit that you can't come back from, like my nigga getting. The nigga, what the fuck was this young soldier? So a young soldier did this shit, and then another nigga got uh the nigga uh what's his name uh uh uh, uh boo boo Bugatti Casino, fake the nigga you know fake getting shot in the robbery, like that's whole nigga shit like faking some shit my nigga and then saying oh no we were shooting a video my nigga that's been done already, it's already been done. And you know, I want to, honestly, I, because it's Mo and it, he's one of the, the last real motherfuckers we got, I wanted to make an excuse for him, like, did he say he, like, this happened, or is this how people took it? Like, was he shooting a video, and this what people took from it? Because motherfuckers will goddamn, they'll put a fucking uh, status up there for you now. They'll see some shit, and they'll put a status for you. Like, did he say this shit, or did somebody else say this shit? But, nigga, if you post this shit, this this what the fuck you post? Letting the people know this and only this? This ain't how you play. Because this isn't outside of what would happen to you. Nigga can see niggas trying to kill you. Why split your fan base like this to where like some motherfuckers feel like this some whole shit and some motherfuckers feel like it's good marketing? Good marketing for who? Your fan base fucks with you, and I, like it, it. Like I said, this is it, it's it's like we in the rap world now. This is rap shit now, but we in the rap game now. Like, and this is what the industry is. Um, this is what. It will drive a motherfucker to it and, and, and it and it lets you know you know when a motherfucker has crossed that line. Like while a motherfucker is on the outskirts of the industry, 
Um, they are still be with the man. Fuck that bullshit, my nigga. I, I'm out there, my nigga. I ain't leave my city, my nigga. I'm gonna always say I don't fuck them. I'm a real nigga. I'll fuck that bullshit. You fuck nigga talking about my nigga. I ain't no rap nigga, my nigga. Real talk. A nigga will play that shit, but then when he enters the game, I don't know exactly why I had to say a dope. Plies is a very good example. There's no reason to do it. Uh, I think we should, you know, just... And, and you want to feel like that's a good thing when a motherfucker exits that unsuccessful uh, way of thinking. But there are side effects that comes with that. Um, I think the biggest sign that a nigga is being indoctrinated to this new form of thinking is their clothes. Um, their clothing is, and me, for me, it, it's their shoes. Um, now, obviously you go to look at Young Thug, look at Gunna, um, you know, and I, I obviously, it, it, it helps certain niggas because you start thinking about so many niggas like the Migos before, you know, the rap shit popped off. But it's like, which one is better? Like, these niggas, Offset was in his grandma house pop locking and shit like that with not this nigga wearing. Like, I don't give a fuck what a nigga say, my nigga. Like, when a nigga go to wearing these ugly ass designer fucking shoes. Oh, these hoes go far away. Oh, oh, like them hoes is ugly as fuck. And a nigga can't tell me that these are not sketchers. You cannot tell me the shit. These are fucking sketchers. If you give me the ugly shoe, you can find my nigga. It is the ugly shit, bro. I know that shit called money. Just give me some ugly ass shit, bro. I don't want that live shit. Not that cheap, my nigga. I don't want that shit. But. That's a, 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 a big sign that a nigga is detached from that in which obviously had him grounded. But a, a nigga will say, I wasn't grounded, I was anchored, meaning that was holding me down, holding me back. And I can understand that way of thinking because um, it's, 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 it's not hard to lose your connection to a place that you really didn't like being in. Like, niggas don't like being in the hood, had, like, going without. Like, there are terrible memories in those streets. Like, the way people treated you and all that shit. But in some cases, that shit is needed. Um, when you get to this level where, you know, you, you're going to these different places and seeing how these different people live um, that aren't necessarily your people, you can get intimidated. You can start feeling like, these. this is my new environment. I need to fit in with this environment. And then, and you can tell when the motherfucker spent, you know, 12 months in Hollywood, New York, in these places, and, and they've only been taking meetings and doing shows and shit like that. Like, these are their new friends. These are their new colleagues. Like, this is their new environment and they're now a product of that environment. And those are the people that are telling them, your shit is down 15%, your shit is up, you know what I'm saying? And that's the, the craziest thing about the rap trap is it in order for it to work, and I've said this before, it's not going to look like a fucking trap. Um, he's not gonna come with horns and a fucking tail. It's gonna, motherfucker gonna come in a fucking sundress and, you know what I'm saying, no makeup. Real talk. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's gonna seem like there's nothing wrong with it. It might even seem like a fucking blessing. And that's one of the reasons why you will trust it, uh, no matter what it is. And then from there, you just, you know, but it's, it's, it's the same thing. Like, that's the issue with dealing with niggas who are 73% real nigga, 85% real nigga, 50% real nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's in there, but it's not really that. Um... 
because a nigga shouldn't have to tell you ain't no reason for a white man to be slapping you on the ass. Nigga shouldn't have to tell you like you doing that for impressions. My nigga, like you're You are now amongst the motherfuckers who run up in stores and scream. Like, are you 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 are you are a pranker? You do pranks now? And if that's who the fuck you is, my nigga. I, and, and what kind of question is that to ask? If that's who the fuck you is, why the fuck you ain't say it in the first place? I'm, he's he's playing the fucking game. But that's the whole thing is that's not who Mo3 is. Mo3 is actually that. And that's why you can't win in the little punk lane. Because in that lane, a real nigga, even a 50% real nigga, is extremely intimidating. They won't allow you there. The only people that are in that lane are people like Lil Tech or Lil Skies. People that we. It's obvious that they're not living what they say, what they rap about. So it's just fun. <laughs> it's just bubble gum. But when you say it, a nigga will like, oh shit, that's that's real shit. Little pump, little skies, little tecker, they'll never. It, it don't matter what the fuck they say on Vlad. It don't matter what the fuck they say on their goddamn interview. They'll never be. It's a what the fuck is this little dude named? Who uh who gets a kick out of buying uh army old old decommissioned army equipment? The fuck is the dude name? Um, little savage, uh Zantana. The motherfucker was riding around in the tank. It's all good, but uh, but the nigga uh uh main music can't even have a, a fucking gun in the video. That nigga uh NFL uh cartel Bo can't even. Fucking be in the fucking video around guns. We different people. We can't do what they do. But as it stands, time is still the biggest exposure that there is. You give it a little bit of time, and a motherfucker will show you what's inside of them. And to be honest, I'm gonna be for real with you, my nigga. In the yellow bees in Mo3 beef, I was riding with Mo3, to be for real with you. Look at this ammunition that you just gave this nigga. You look like a fucking clown. I'm gonna have to shout out to my nigga, um. Uh, shout out to my nigga, uh, uh, with the urban politician. Shout out to Ant. Uh, I'm gonna hit him up and see what the fuck going on. Um. With this whole situation, um, man, it's just like there is no winning. They're not going to let you leave this rap game with your shit intact. You're not going to leave the way you came. You're going to have more charges. You're going to have more wounds or you're just not going to leave. You're going to die here. Or you'll sabotage your motherfucking self. Because you just don't know how to take this shit. You just in this and it's like that's what the trap is. It's like if you don't fall victim to gun violence, catching the case, uh, getting robbed and or getting did like Young L.A. and Alley Boy. Very, that's crazy. That's how ironic is that? The same way Alley Boy came in, and how he pushed Young LA out is the same way he got pushed out. Crazy, but if you don't fall victim to none of that shit, then your mind is gonna turn against you because it's just not for you to um, be able to comprehend. It's, it's just too many. Crossing paths and shit like that and you have to get inside it to understand like um With the with the juice world shit. Oh, man fucking faggots 
Oh, uh, no, he was doing, how, how, you're not a doctor, man. This is before it came out that fucking, you know what I'm saying? Yes, he took the fucking pills. You're not a doctor. How do you know he fucking died of fucking pills, man? He could have fucking, he was doing all these shows, man. He could have just been exhausted, man. That's, that is what it's made for. Those shows and how you have to do those shows and how you have to put yourself out there and pimp yourself and it's damn near like niggas can't get their health together at home. Let alone being on the road and having to eat fast food and never seeing the same place twice and just moving, moving, moving. Where you need to do drugs, to be honest, like you need to do drugs because if you have, which all of us do, if you get self-conscious, um, being around new people and shit like that, and you want to, you know, do something to calm your nerves and shit like that, you're going to be doing that shit a lot because you're always around new fucking people. There is no one slow down the weed and shit like that. My nigga, you got a fucking meet and greet in fucking Albuquerque tomorrow. Nigga, like the fuck? You like you finna need that shit. So this it, it's just another thing to it. So you're not going to leave this game. And it's and it's so sad because even after all that running around, running around, running around that you did for five years, I'm saying five years of doing the shit. So that's maybe one a, a year and a half of being hot and then the the last three and a half is you just fizzling out. Um, but for all that time you did that shit, you have nothing to show for it. You didn't have to sell the car, sell the chain. Because while you were hot, you put your shit up so fucking high that now you're just working to make sure that shit don't get taken away. And now, as your career is fizzling out, and that's another way they can scare you. They can tell you about the statistics of how artists, the, the, the artist's uh, career has diminished exponentially. Like, it used to be you had two years, three years of actually, you know what I'm saying, making hits, being on other people's songs and shit like that. Now, you literally have six months. Six fucking months and no one wants to hear you anymore. Designer, uh, Lil Nas X, just keep playing the list. Take K, whether or not uh, 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 TJX6, whether or fucking not they, you go to jail, like, they don't want to hear you anymore. Like, niggas don't give a fuck about you no more. And they can scare you with that. Like, yeah, I know it's good right now, but we, you know, your, your, your numbers are kind of trying, going, starting to slip. We might need to do something um, to get new eyes on you. So that, they plant that seed in your mind, and now, once you start seeing, you know, the shows slimming up, and or, or certain shit, and, or you drop a video, because he did drop a video, like, a, with a bitch and shit like that, and the numbers ain't just really been rising like that, and there's only so much paying for numbers that you can do. You know what I'm saying? You know that your numbers ain't hitting like they need to hit. So what the fuck else can you do? I got shot, y'all. And it's just, and it's like, this is the response. This is the response. Nigga, you knew this. You wouldn't have did this shit two years ago. Act like you got shot. If a nigga would have told you, if a rap nigga would have did this shit, you would have said, look at them rap nigga, man. But now you're in a situation where yeah, well, fuck that shit. I'm smart than these motherfuckers, but you knew. Man, these motherfuckers gonna look at me crazy, man. He real nigga. Man, I'm shit, man. Fuck. Gotta do what you gotta do, man. Fuck, man. And you went all the way out with the shit. Like, you could have showed in the video that you was kind of like bullshitting so they can see that you were acting. Nigga, you were dead fucking serious trying to trick people. If it's a music video, why aren't you acting? Where are the lights at? The same shit with the fucking, uh, Dolph and fucking, uh, Key Glock shit. Nigga, if it's a fucking video, let it be a goddamn video. Why in the fuck is you going so hard? 
It's a joke. It's, it's part of a video. Who in the fuck are you trying to trick if it's a fucking music video? What the fuck? I'm going to try to convince everybody I'm really fucking this bitch. Nigga, it's a video. Uh, no, no, I'm going to try to uh, make everybody think I'm really running from the police. Let me drive fast as fuck. What the fuck? So, kill that is a music video. What the fuck, nigga? It's a line. Like, why in the fuck are you acting so serious if it's a fucking thing? I'm telling you, dog. I was going in on niggas. Nigga, if you don't know shit, nigga, don't say shit. Because the nigga had to slur down and everything. It's a, it's a music, it's a video, damn bro, I can't do, I can't do some shit for a music video, nigga, stop fucking flexing, nigga, you did that shit for fucking views, nigga. You couldn't get your name in a goddamn blog no other way. Niggas ain't fucking retarded. Can't believe you let your motherfucking legacy go down like that, nigga, you was on a song with Boosie and everything, nigga. One of the last real niggas niggas had left, man. That's how the fuck you do it. God damn. It, I mean, it just, it is what it is, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this rap shit is so fucking difficult to navigate that... Shut up. It's so difficult to navigate to the point where it's like... I don't know what what's wrong to do no more because, you know, I don't have nobody to talk to because anybody that could have told me, no, I don't do that, is gone. I've been got rid of them. Only motherfuckers I got around me now is yes men, niggas who going to be in the video acting with me. Niggas, you know not gonna be around when you fall off. You really alienate yourself. And it's so fucked up that the more successful you become, the more you purposely, accidentally alienate yourself. Because you're just in a new fucking environment that just, uh, I don't know what to do. I like, well, you telling me, but I'm. Uh, I want I want money, so I'm gonna go. I want to be like, I want to be like Jay Z, so I'm gonna go do what Jay Z did. But you ain't have like you you not understanding that they made the game to where there will be no more Jay Z's, Timberlands, Dr. Dre's. Everybody from this point on is going to be permanently temporary. You will never. See a fucking, you know, a motherfucker go the, the, the fucking distance. You're going to be in and out. And it's made like that. No one's going to have the power to do nothing. Our goal is to get you on Love and Hip Hop. We're trying to get you on reality TV. That's the cycle. Come in, you hot. You don't understand the game. You can't navigate it. We put some bullshit in your head. Now you so broke. You got to go to Love and Hip Hop. But you want to Love and Hip Hop after you didn't have the sale list. You lost that. Couldn't pay on that. Because you fed right into what the fuck they told you. Oh, yeah, hey, man, you got to get your house in Calabasas. Man, look, did you have you seen DJ Emmy's uh, car collection? Hey, you should buy you one. You should get your car. Get you a couple cars, man. Get you a couple cars so the people like it is really going to help your sales when they see that you're successful. Hey, don't worry. Hey, we have a, our own loan program to where shut up to where you can um, only have a um, hundred uh, percent interest rate. So hey, take a hundred thousand. Let the people on Instagram see that you're getting money. 
because that, as we see with our numbers, our uh, analysts have shown that hey, when our artists show, when our uh, when our artists show their money online, their impressions go through the roof. So here, take that. Like I said, you're only going to have to pay two hundred thousand back plus the um, uh, advance that we gave you. So you uh, about a million. But hey, you'll make that back with your next project, and if not, then you'll make it with merchandise and shows. So use this to take you to the next level if you're going to gamble make sure you gamble on yourself all right man we believe in you and they send you the fuck out there because they are loving hip-hop they are that record label they are that fucking show these motherfuckers own rehab centers and prisons and fucking pharmaceutical companies. Everything that the artist is going to need through his cycle in and out of the industry, they own it. It's in their best interest to send you through that motherfucker, but you can't see it. It's just like a white boy coming into the trap. We're gonna run circles around them. This is their fucking trap. Ain't nobody listening, man. It's been a rap trap. Make sure you go to the new Tactical Operations uh, Conseco's Rap School. If you're trying to enter this rap game, there's shit that you need to know. I'll leave a video at the end of the video uh, at the end of the show so that you can go straight to it. And the link is always in the description box. Make sure that you go to the Patreon. Um, shout out to Ken Dio. He's going crazy on the Hallucination Chronicles if you have not seen the progress we're making or if you haven't seen the Don't Be a Dummy Go Get You Some Money a Violin cover from my nigga um, don't want to say your shit wrong <coughs> Marvelous Beats um, make sure that you go to the Patreon for that um, and of course all the shit that we can't show here on YouTube make sure you hit the PayPal and the Cash App I'll see y'all in a minute love love